So, if you look at the screen, it says, what is history? And I've had some questions from students. Oh, what does it mean? What's the difference between history and geography? And why do we have to know this stuff? Why are we learning this stuff? Part of why you learn something in school is to train your brain. The more you learn, the more you use your brain, the better your brain develops. That's part of it. But another part deals with how you can use this in the future. But first, let's talk about what history is. What do you think history is? Raise your hand. What is history? I'm sure you've heard about history before. What do you think history is? The past, OK? OK, something important that happened in the past? So me going to the bathroom this morning isn't history? OK. Not necessarily something you want to learn about, but what? Are, anything else? Nothing else? Something you learn about? Well, yeah, history is something that you learn about. What kind of things do you learn about in history? Give me some examples of things or categories of things that you learn about in history, maybe. Okay, it's a story of what happened anytime after right now or before right now? Before right now, okay. The story of things that have happened. Normally, this is the answer that I get. History is memorizing dates and names. History isn't about dates and names. History is more about Things such as past events, things that have happened in the past, they don't necessarily need to be important. Because what is important to one person might not be important to another. History, in its broadest sense, deals with past events. Things that have happened in the past. Now that past can be 2,000 years ago, two millennium ago, two millennia ago, or five seconds ago. For example, five seconds ago, I made contact with somebody that was chewing gum and they suddenly stopped chewing. It's part of history. Now that person's gonna go put the gum in the garbage. Right. So that's past events. History is also, and I really commend Doug for saying this because this is the essence of it, history is a story. That's why the word story is in history. Now, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm hoping... Hey, it's not turning black today. Good. The word story is within the word history. And actually, in French, the word histoire, where we get the word history from, it's the French word for story. The German word for story, Geschichte, is also the word for history. The Polish word for story is historia. The Polish word for history is historia. In most other languages, the word for history and the word for story are the same because history is a story. It's how one thing led to another thing and led to another thing. Which leads us to another thing that is history. History is cause and effect. History is a series of dominoes. One falls and that causes something else to fall. And it doesn't have to be major big events. It can be small little events. Wake up in the morning, you stub your toe. Okay, that's one event, but that one event might haunt you and change the way you walk during the day. It might force you to walk differently that day, which causes 
you to wear out your shoes in a different way that day. The wear and tear on your shoes are different. Even something so small as that, or something as big as a war, or tricking a country into starting a war so that you can get more land. All of that is cause and effect. Everything that happens, even me saying this today, has an effect on you. It could be Margot starts to yawn because she doesn't want to hear it and she's bored. Or it could be that she was up late last night doing her homework, therefore she's tired this morning. All those things have a cause and effect. Relationship. That's history. History is not dates and names. You will see some years from me, there will be a rare occasion that you will get a date in a year. But most of what you will get in this class is a story. And then that story will include what happened and what happened as a result of it. The cause and effect. Everybody clear on that? I'm not a big name and dates kind of person. I'm not going to say, here are the dates that George Washington lived. Memorize them. Mm -mm. I want you to know the story. Mexican War, 1846 to 1848. Okay, that's fine. But tell me the story behind it. Tell me the story about the president that wanted to get California, and so he tricked Mexico into a war, and we won that war. And as a result, we got the Mexican, what did we get? It starts with a C. Who worked for you? What did we get as a result of the Mexican War? We got the Mexican session. Now, is that dates and names or is that a story? Story. I'm a storyteller. Now, why study history? Is it because... We need a job for wonderfully intelligent, multilingual, polyglot social studies teachers. Do Polish dancers? You know, we don't need it for that. Why do you think we need to study history? Ooh, somebody is quoting a guy called Cicero. Cicero was a guy back in ancient Rome that said. If you do not learn from history, if you don't learn from the past, you're bound to repeat it. If you don't learn about the past mistakes, you're bound to make those mistakes again. Yeah, that's certainly part of history. Any other ideas why to study history? Just to give you something more to read and to do more homework in? Some of you might think so. It's not the case. Part of it is to learn where we came from, not only as our family backgrounds, but also as a nation. Part of what we've been looking at today or this week has been, where did we come from as a country? How did we get from the 13 colonies all the way to the Pacific Coast? How did Forest Lake, where you are right now, become part of the United States? Learn where we came from. understand why we are the way we are. Why is it that we have a different accent than those people in the South? Why is it that Minnesota school systems tend to be better than those in Mississippi or Louisiana? Why is it that we know words such as kielbasa and hot dish up here when places, other places in the country don't know those words. Understanding why we are the way we are. And to learn from our past mistakes and successes. You've already learned the United States has done some stupid and nasty stuff in the past. We've also done a lot of good things. We need to learn what mistakes we've made so you don't make the same mistakes again, and that can be in big, bold history, like nationwide history, or your own personal history. Oops, first semester I really didn't pay attention very much. 
oops, first semester, I didn't do my homework. Second semester, I'm paying attention. I'm getting my assignments done on time. Learning from past mistakes and also successes. We had a Great Depression once in this country about 80 years ago. We had a Great Depression. And there were th some things that our government did to get us out of that depression. And it succeeded. What do you think some people are doing right now? Some people in our government. What are they doing? They're trying to do the same thing they did. They're looking at the past success and saying, it worked then, let's try it now. Is it guaranteed to work? No. Different times, different situations. But that's what you try to do from learning history. So, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully that answers some questions. Because that's the end of what I'm going to talk about today so that you can have the rest of the time to work on your review assignment that's due on Monday. The review assignment is due on Monday. You will notice that there is going to be something added to the review assignment. Something that hasn't been there before. And that's because this is history. History deals with cause and effect. History deals with the story. And you need to be able to explain the story. Explaining means using complete what? Sentences. Yes. You may work with your partners on these. As usual, if your partner's not here, you may work with the group behind you or in front of you. Knock, knock, knock. And the winner is... Is it an immediately thing? Is it an after class thing? That's always a better thing. Immediate things are like, oh, oh. There you go. So you have the rest of the hour. You can pull off that back page as usual. You have the rest of the hour to work on this. It is due on Monday, the day of the test. Tomorrow we'll have a review game.